Hey guys, so you might be surprised like me to hear that this is a Blumhouse movie. Yes, a Blumhouse movie. Look, I give them a hard time. They've had some good movies. The Invisible Man, The Black Bone. But still, when you hear Blumhouse, well, this year they've had a movie about a haunted swimming pool and a haunted teddy bear. Let's just leave it at that. Well, look, they did have that artificial intelligence movie, which I just reviewed, and that was actually not too bad. It was getting better. And now they're at the point where they're actually good. This is a remake of a Danish horror drama movie of the same name from 2022. So obviously it feels really early to be getting a remake. And when it comes to remakes, I feel like we always get those people who were saying we don't need this, we don't need this, and yes. Are they right some of the time? Absolutely. But you could say that about any remake in the world that you're not interested in. I just never feel like I'm in that position where I can say we don't need this because what I don't enjoy, someone else might really love and vice versa. Like having a remake is never going to take away from the original. That will always be there to enjoy. Though having said that, Rings of Power is probably the only time where I will say we do not need this. So the movie is about a couple on vacation. They have a young child and they get along really well with this couple they meet on vacation who also have a young child. So the couple invites them over to their home and they think, why not? Well, because you're in a horror movie, that's why not. You never go over to strangers' houses. It's like saying, oh, be right back. You just don't do it. So this might be a small spoiler. So if you're really sensitive to spoilers, just skip over the next like 30 seconds. So the ending was Americanized apparently. It pulled its punches in a way that the European one didn't because it feels like, you know, certain audiences are okay with different things. Europeans seem to be okay with a bleaker, darker ending. And I think the original ending suited the theme and the tone of the movie more, especially with the social commentary, what I feel like they were going for with, you know, trust your gut instinct, listen to your intuition, or maybe I'm just looking too much into this movie. So I feel like this movie was inspired by Funny Games, which is another really originally bleak European movie that got remade into an American version, which is all about the same theme of be careful with trusting strangers and I feel like it had a very Scandinavian mentality even though that was I think an Austrian movie and this is a Danish one well that's technically not Scandinavia but you know it's the same sort of region and I feel like they have that mentality of extreme politeness and trying not to cause drama or awkwardness to the point where they're willing to put themselves in danger and that's not just for Scandinavians, you know, that could be for any group of people, but especially I feel like in those European types of areas, I feel like that was the inspiration in a way for this, but once again, maybe I'm looking too deep. But I feel like Funny Games, it must have been inspired by that. It just feels like so heavily inspired, almost to the point where I would say, what movie came out first? It was Funny Games, right? So maybe they were yeah copying that a little bit too much well, I haven't actually seen the original 2022 version so I'm just going by what I've heard so James McAvoy is definitely the standout of the cast I feel like the guy can go from seeming like a genuinely nice guy to terrifying and so scary so quickly I've been a fan of him ever since it chapter 2 and split I think he's a really good actor and I'd really like to see him in more horror movies. So his wife is played by an actress whose name I can't remember, but I know she was on that BBC TV show, The Fall, with Jamie Dornan, and she was good on that, and she's good here. I feel like her and James McAvoy can both do that sort of nice and creepy thing, him so much more than her, but still, like, with both of them, it feels like they can be really superficially charming for small amounts of time. But then you start to unpeel the layers and you see their mask kind of slip as the movie goes on. 
And you're just waiting, especially for James McAvoy's character, to lose it completely. And when he finally does, it's so good. The payoff is definitely worth it. So the other couple I feel like are people that I wouldn't want to know in real life. But they're entertaining to watch, which I guess you could say about all the people in this movie. I wouldn't want to know either couple, but I feel like they're just really pretentious. The wife is overbearing. The husband is a timid, stupid doormat. I know I'm sounding harsh, but he just infuriated me in this movie. And they make so many dumb decisions. It feels like if there were a horror award for most stupid couple, they would, okay, probably not win it, but almost be like second or third place, definitely. For example, there was this moment where they know that the gig is up. The killers know that the other couple know that they're killers at this point, but they haven't really acknowledged it. It's not actually out in the open yet, but everybody knows. So James McAvoy's character has this really shaky ladder and he's asking the other man to climb up it. And he's still saying at this point, like, oh, okay, trying to play along, thinking that somehow that will help him. And I get that that's what he's trying to do, keep the peace. But like I said earlier, you know, it's that mentality, keep the peace. And he should be fighting at the, that point. And you're saying to yourself, there's no possible way the man can be that stupid that he climbs up the ladder. And well, no spoilers, but yeah, it's pretty obvious he climbs up the ladder. And that's just one of the many, many things this couple do that are so, so stupid, like, you have a kid, you need to prioritise their safety, not being polite. Anyway, look, the score was good, it was very fitting. And I was really, really impressed with how this movie blended horror and comedy without taking away from the overall tone of the movie and seeming campy. It blended so seamlessly and my theatre at my early screening, they were just in hysterics. They were really responsive to the movie. It was so surprisingly funny. So I feel like the tension was pretty good. I would say I would have liked it if they could have stretched it out a little bit longer until they finally all start, you know, all hell breaks loose. I really enjoyed the build up, the anticipation. But when we finally get there in the third act, it's definitely worth the wait. So yeah, I really enjoyed this. I would give it an 8 out of 10. So it's one of the best horror movies I feel like I've seen this year. Let me know down below if you've seen the original 2022 version. Which one do you prefer? Please like, comment, subscribe, all of that YouTube stuff. It really helps me out. Thanks, guys.